As mentioned, very short reading this morning. Matthew 8 has it, 14 to 17, and it says this in God's word. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Trust me, there's a massive temptation this morning to open with a mother-in-law joke, but we're not interested in that today. What we have here is a clear message that God's power extends to our relatives and neighbors. If you have people in your family that aren't Christians, but you are, you'll know the trickiness and pain of that fact. It's really hard to be a Christian witness in our families. They know us so well, and so they're alive to our flaws and mistakes. And how many of us have heard a comment like this? Well, that's not very Christian. What's the answer to that? Well, this morning I'm going to tell you, and this little moment with Peter's mother-in-law will help us see it. The first thing here is the significance of of Jesus' healing in general. There's a, a quotation from Isaiah 53 in our passage, and it makes for a good moment to consider why Jesus heals at all. Why are these miracles such a feature of his ministry? The Isaiah line is this. Surely he has borne our graves and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed with our iniquities. Upon him is the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. When we notice that that's a line from Isaiah, it helps us see its use by Matthew. What it does here is underline the real reason Jesus heals disease. That real reason is the connection to real healing that he would bring to many through the cross. He was crushed for our iniquities. With his wounds, we are healed. That's not just for Peter's mother-in-law, but for the many who also came that evening for healing, uh, demoniacs under the oppression of evil and many who were sick, all healed with that powerful word of Jesus we heard about last week with a centurion's servant. We have to see a movement in Matthew from outcast leper to Roman centurion, and here to a woman, and then to the crowds. Jesus is for them all. Jesus is for all of us as well. His power is enough for all. His words still carry power for those who would go to him in faith. And let me say this, we have to get off any small notions or ideas about Jesus easing our headaches or our bad back or your cancer or your MS or COVID or whatever else you might mention. I mean, pray for healing for these things, please. But know that the real miracle is Jesus' death for our lives, a defeat of our greatest enemy, death itself, and the wrath that awaits those who die alone. What about Peter's mother-in-law, though? Well, this is a miracle of circumstance. Uh, Peter's mother-in-law doesn't go to Jesus. He simply happens upon her while with Peter. Jesus is in Peter's house. He notices his in-law is unwell, and he heals her. Now, if this is a passage that tells us that Jesus' power extends to our relatives and neighbors, then it's the proximity to Peter that does it. In the mother-in-law, we have the relative. In the crowds that come, we have the neighbors. 
Now, what might pass us by this morning is the subtle call to live as Christian people in all of our moments, in all circumstances, whenever and wherever we find ourselves. Christianity isn't a weekend hobby or a life insurance policy, or perhaps we should say a death insurance policy. It's a relationship. It's to be part of us, even when we visit friends and their mothers-in-law. There are so many so-called Christians, and I'm sure even here in Bally Gilbert, who miss that. Christianity is not something you do. Praying uh, when the service happens, or singing the songs, or even throwing in a little cash every now and again is not Christian. That is not a member of Christ's kingdom. A Christian is something you are because of what Jesus has done. And we can't miss that. What we cannot miss either is that Peter's mother-in-law is a woman. Remember, that would have carried a, a social level below the men of Jesus' day. And here we have that continuation, that movement in Matthew and his miracles. Jesus shows more compassion to more of the people who need it the most. From leper to a Roman to a woman is a pattern that is here on purpose. Now, what's the lesson of that? That Jesus is merciful and compassionate and kind to women and children as well as men. Our 21st century minds should have picked up the break in sequence, man, man, woman. But it's more than sex and gender. Jesus' compassion extends to the lowly. The leper was lowly, but the centurion wasn't. Peter's mother-in-law, a woman, is. Now, we might say, isn't that great? Good for her. But the keen-eyed among us will notice that she does something interesting next. It says, he touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. Typical man, right? Well, no. There's something very significant happening here. And it's nothing to do with men or women or even this particular healing. What is really going on here? Well, did we notice what was wrong with this lady? She had a fever. Now, no harm to her. But that's not exactly leprosy or paralysis. So why heal this woman of a fever? And why is it important for us to hear that she got up and began to serve Jesus and her family? Well, we have to remember the Isaiah quote. It's about Jesus. It's about his own suffering, death, and resurrection. Listen again to what happens to Peter's mother-in-law. He touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. She rose. In the Greek, that's literally raised up. And that has to be a pointer to the renewing energy of God through Jesus. A fever, you know this, it wears you down, it saps your energy. We've all had the flu. You sweat and then you shiver. You don't sleep very well. And then the day comes when you attempt a shower and it wipes you out all over again. You weren't quite ready for the effort it took to bathe yourself. And then you might fancy heading back to work and the same thing happens. Energy gone. You're just not back to yourself yet. This woman rises from her fever bed and gets straight to work. No word of tiredness or complaining. And that is miraculous. That is the renewing energy of God through Jesus. And isn't this the language of Isaiah 53 and of the Christian faith, that by his wounds we are healed, that by his death we come to life. Think of Jesus' own rising for a moment. Does he come back tired and groggy? Perhaps still a bit wiped out from you know the pain and the effort of dying on a cross and being wrapped and being buried in a tomb? No, he's back. 
It's not a slow thing, but an instant renewal. I don't think it's a leap to believe the same for myself and for all of those who would enter the kingdom of God by this death and resurrection. This is what we mean by this language of dead and alive, lost and found, old and new, condemned and free. We rise and we serve and we do both those things through the power of the Holy Spirit. What about the answer to skeptical friends and family when they see us struggle or falter in our faith? The difficulty we face as Christian people in reaching our families and neighbors with this gospel. Well, do what we've done this morning, please. Put their eyes on Jesus. If people measure Christianity on how we are, we can hardly blame them for jeering or doubting. But if they were to judge Christianity and the church on Jesus, then there's no room for doubting or jeering. He is all in all. He is enough for all, compassionate to the lost and the lowly, powerful enough to cover the great problem beneath everything else, sin and the death that it brings. And you know what? The same has to be said in the church family. If we judge one another by our own standards and opinions and preferences, we're going to find ourselves in serious bother. That way leads to division and closure. But if the church keeps its eyes and its minds on Jesus, then there's only truth and ultimately good things for his bride. Someone has said, let us measure ourselves by our master and not by our fellow servants. Then pride will be impossible. Why is Peter's mother-in-law in the Bible? To show us that Jesus' power is extended to our relatives and neighbors, that his power is resurrection power, and that we rise and we serve him. Let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, we realize that we are the ones in constant need of healing. We are still being purified by your son and all he achieved by the cross and the tomb. We should thank you for these words and moments inspired by a mother-in-law. Touch us with these thoughts that we might serve you and others better. To that end, we pray for our world. We pray for President Biden and the mess he has inherited. We know that no one can pretend all will be well in the United States from now on. And so we pray for our brother and sister Christians across the pond, that they would hear what we have heard, that they would live all their moments as your people and draw the eye of the world because they are different and because they are your sons. Father, we ask the same prayer for our own land and this church. If we ignore you week by week, we won't last. We cannot be a church without Jesus. We cannot survive without your word and its leading and shaping of who we really are. Many of us need to set that right. Many of us have a pretend faith that does nothing. Many of us have a struggling faith that falls down each day. But we can see and know that Jesus is enough for us all. He can claim us as his if we hear his call and come to him. He can revive us because he makes all things new. May we go with Jesus this day and tomorrow and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and back again next Sunday when we will come to eagerly hear more of the master. And we pray in his great name. Amen.